Hi, good morning. It is Sunday, December 20th, and today we begin our fourth week of Advent. And so as we enter into this time of daily prayer, we begin by lighting our fourth candle, all four candles of our Advent wreath. Oh, that looks nice and complete, doesn't it? Let's come now into our time of daily prayer. We begin with these words from Luke 2. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. Beneath the surface of your story is an inescapable fact. You entered this world as vulnerable as any one of us in order to nail that vulnerability to the cross. Our fears, our insecurities, our sins, all that can separate us from God, exchanged by your grace for love. We cannot comprehend the reasoning, only marvel that salvation comes to us through a baby born in a stable who reaches out to a world in need. Perfect Lord and risen Savior, how we're thankful for your birth. As a child, you came to save us and to bring us peace on earth. Oh, to bring us peace on earth. In a humble little stable, there you came. Just a babe in swaddling cloth, and the angels sang in heaven that day as God became flesh for a man to be saved, and as a star stood still. And then from John 3, Jesus answered, I tell you the truth, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless he is born of water and of the spirit. Flesh give birth, gives birth to flesh, but the spirit, spirit gives birth to spirit. You should not be surprised at my saying, you must be born again. The wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear its sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from 
or where it is going. So it is with everyone born of the Spirit. And so we come into our time of silence. I'll put the words of that scripture back up for you if you would like to use this time to reflect on those words. Or you can use this time simply to close your eyes to enjoy the peace and the calm of the moment in this final week as we lead up to Christmas. We enter into this time of silence. If you, O oh Lord, kept a record of sins, O oh Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, therefore you are feared. I wait for the Lord, my soul waits, and in his word I put my hope. There is a transformation that takes place within the warmth of your embrace, that certain knowledge that you are refuge, shelter, fortress, and stronghold against which no army can succeed, that you are brother, sister, mother, father, the love that knows no bounds, that you are God and I am lost outside of your arms. Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a faithful spirit within me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and a willing spirit to sustain me. O Lord, open our lips and our mouths will forever declare your praise. O come, O come, Emmanuel, and ransom captive Israel that mourns in lonely exile here until the Son of God appear. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come again, and with us ever dwell. And so our scripture today, we continue in the Jesus Storybook Bible, and we are reading about God's messenger today, which comes to us from Jonah chapters 1 through 4 and Hebrews chapter 1, the first two verses. And so let us hear now the story of Jonah. God had a job for Jonah, but Jonah didn't want it. Go to Nineveh, God said, and tell your worst enemies that I love them. No, said Jonah, those are bad people who do bad things. Exactly, said God. They have run far away from me, but I can't stop loving them. I will give them a new start. I will forgive them. No, said Jonah, they don't deserve it. I'll run away, Jonah said to himself, far away, so far away that God will not be able to find me. Then I won't have to do what God says. It's a good plan, he said, because as far as he knew it, it was a good plan. But of course, it wasn't a good plan at all. It was a silly plan because you can't run away from God, but he will always come and find you. Jonah went ahead with his not so very good plan. One ticket to not Nineveh, please, he said, and he boarded a boat sailing in the very opposite direction of Nineveh. Well, it wasn't long before a fierce wind blew and the boat started to lurch and pitch and roll and everyone started turning green. Jonah sat bolt upright in his bed. You see, the first thing that went wrong with Jonah's not very good plan was that God sent a big storm after him. The sailors couldn't sail their ship properly, were sinking, they screamed, and they started throwing everything overboard, suitcases, food, whatever they could find. By now, Jonah knew that the storm was his fault. Throw me in instead, he shouted to the sailors, and the storm will stop. The sailors weren't sure. It's the only way you can be saved, Jonah cried. And so one, two, three, and splash. No sooner had Jonah hit the water than the waves grew calm and the wind died down and the storm stopped. Just then, when Noah thought that it was all over, when he was sure he was going to drown, God sent a big fish to rescue him. The fish swallowed Jonah whole, with one big gulp. Jonah must have thought that he had died. It was so dark in there, like in a tomb. But then he smelled the rotting food, and he felt the slimy seaweed, and he knew that he wasn't dead. He was in the belly of the fish. Sitting there in the darkness for three whole days, Jonah had plenty of time to think, plenty of time. Pretty soon he realized his plan was, well, it was a very silly plan indeed. He was sorry for running away, and he prayed to God from inside that great fish, and he asked God to forgive him. And after three days, the fish spat Jonah safely out onto the sandy beach. And just then, Jonah heard someone calling his name. Go to Nineveh, God said. And this time, Jonah said yes. He went straight to Nineveh, and he told everyone God's wonderful message. 
Even though you have run far from God, he can't stop loving you, Jonah told them. Run to him so he can forgive you. The people of Nineveh listened to Jonah and they started loving God. They learned to do what God said and to stop running away from him, just like Jonah. Many years later, God was going to send another messenger with the same wonderful message. Like Jonah, he would spend three days in utter darkness. But this messenger would be God's own son. He would be called the Word because he himself would be God's message. God's message translated into our own language. Everything God wanted to say to the whole world in a person. And so as we think about Jonah and the message that God had for people about how he never stops loving them and how that points to the message that comes with the birth of Jesus about God's never ending love. We hang the big fish on our Jesse tree.
As we come into our time of prayer, we again imagine a circle of an enfolding love of God's care coming and surrounding us. It is that circling prayer that we did two weeks ago. And so as we pray for each of these areas of, of concern in our lives, we imagine God's love and care encircling those for whom we pray. Let us come now into this time of prayer. Circle us, Lord, circle us with the light of your presence bright within this dark word world. Enable us to be overcomers of fear and temptation. Enable us to be victors over sin and despair. Enable us to become that which you would desire. In silence we pray. Lord of creation, Lord of salvation, circle us with the light of your presence. Circle us, Lord, circle our family within the shelter of your outstretched arms. Protect them in each moment of their daily lives. Protect them in the decisions that they face. Protect their homes and relationships. In silence we pray. Lord of creation, Lord of salvation, circle our families with the light of your presence. Circle us, Lord, circle this nation with Advent, love, and hope. Create a desire to listen to the Advent message. Create a willingness to understand and respond. Create a need to reach out to the Christ child. In silence we pray. Lord of creation, Lord of salvation, circle our nation with the light of your presence. Circle us, Lord, circle this world with the joy of your salvation. Where there is sickness and disease, bring healing. Where there is hunger and despair, bring hope. Where there is torture and oppression, bring release. In silence we pray. Lord of creation, Lord of salvation, circle this world with the light of your presence. I arise today through the strength of heaven, light of the sun, splendor of fire, swiftness of wind, depth of sea, stability of earth, firmness of rock. I arise today through God's strength to pilot me, God's might to uphold me, God's wisdom to guide me, God's hand to guard me. Afar or anear, alone or in a multitude, Christ shield me today against wounding. Christ with me, Christ before me, Christ behind me, Christ on my right, Christ on my left, Christ beneath me, Christ above me, Christ in me. I arise today through the mighty strength of the Lord of creation. Amen. Have a great day. I will see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.